I'm David Almasi with the National Center for Public Re Policy Research, and I, my president and I are both personal Time Warner shareholders. Um, you're under fire for sponsorship of the public theater's violent Trump-inspired performance of the play Julius Caesar in Central Park. Particularly due to yesterday's attack on Congress, I'd like you to explain your continued sponsorship. But first, I would like to ask about CNN. Uh, CNN recently parted ways with Kathy Griffin over a photo of a mock severed head of Trump and as, uh, Reza Aslan for calling our president a piece of excrement um, for pushing anti-terror travel ban. That's not a good start. Uh, Mr. Bukas, you admitted to us in 2013 at this meeting that CNN needed more balance. We praised you last year after CNN President Jeff Zucker acknowledged this and it added more diverse views. But bias seems worse than ever. As shareholders, we're concerned that the reputational risk to our investment in Time Warner is CNN appears to be a key player in the war against the Trump presidency. CNN's Trump criticism seems obsessive. For numbers, the Media Research Center analyzed CNN programming between 4 a.m. and midnight on May 12th. Of 13 hours and 27 minutes of news coverage, all but 68 minutes were devoted to Trump, overwhelmingly about the firing of FBI Director James Comey. Of the 123 guests and panelists on CNN that day, 96 were anti-Trump. Only seven were pro-Trump and 20 were neutral or mixed. Only two of 71 CNN experts supported Trump. MRC also noted that the frequent editorializing of CNN's own hosts and anchors. Um, this isn't, as your quote, trying to be independent and objective in our news reporting that you pledged in 2014. Is it any wonder that President Trump mocks CNN as fake news, that the network was snubbed by Vice President Pence, and that it receives poor access to White House events? But how does this bias affect our return on investment? Half of the American public voted for Trump last November, and they, they support his agenda. CNN acts if it's part of the anti-Trump resistance. Are you willing to lose those viewers over the bias? More importantly, are you willing to lose advertiser revenue? The Media Research Center, again, they're alerting advertisers of news programs that peddle, as they say it, smear, hate, and political extremism, and they ask them to justify their continued support. Are you concerned about advertisers leaving CNN? Will you continue to ignore appeals for objectivity at the risk of the investment of Time Warner? People are also wondering why you aren't following Delta and Bank of America and dropping support for the public theater in New York, especially now that extremism seems to be breeding violence. Will you? Boycotts work. Just ask Bill O'Reilly. Uh, can, can you stay? Because I think you have a lot of questions. Uh, maybe <laughs> we should you. go Thank through you for them in order. Um, let's start with the uh, public theater and the Shakespeare play and then maybe move to CNN. So a couple of facts of what our involvement is. We don't support the, Shakespeare, the, the plays or the productions of the public theater, and we're not uh, providing financial support to the individual production of the Shakespeare play. Um, what we do support is a program for uh, young people and young and emerging artists, and we've been doing that for years. We're proud of that, and the shows like Hamilton and some others that have come out of it. Um, we have a writer's program and a young talent program. That's what the public does, and they also put on a lot of different productions. We don't fund that effort on their part or individual choices, and therefore we don't have a role in approving or influencing which productions they select or how they stage those. Um, in, in that point, the play Julius Caesar, and I'm not uh, going to turn into um, a, a drama critic, or a literary critic, although I think many of us read it in school. It, the point of the play is uh, one that has been debated for uh, probably 400 years. It's not one that uh, advocates, if you think about the play itself uh, about Julius Caesar, the killing of Caesar. It actually raises very important points about how that did not work out well nor did it accomplish the aims of those senators who did kill Caesar. So I think the weight of opinion has been over the past several hundred years, and it's why all of us got assigned it in school, learn about tyranny, learn about how elected leaders can end up changing what they got elected to, and then if the senators who are responding to it engage in, in the case of Caesar, murder, is that a good thing? I think the play in, on balance of critics say, no, it's actually an argument against something like that. And over the years, as not just with Julius Caesar, but all Shakespeare plays, they're more often or oftentimes cast in a different or modern period versus the one 
It's not all togas uh, in the Roman Senate. And that's been true for a long time. There have been, play, you know, Caesar has been put in the political context in the 30s and 40s. It's been done uh, four or five years ago with a different president from an opposite party. And so it's not an attempt, as far as we understand, but again, we don't, we don't fund this. We're not uh, influential about what they do and what they don't do. But we certainly are not going to drop our support for uh, an institution, the public theater, that has done so much for diversity of expression, created so many fine experiences and works of art, and I think in this case is not doing what the critics who haven't seen the play or read the play are assuming the play is leading the audiences to think. It's probably opposite of what the campaign that's been organized actually says. So that's our view of uh, our relationship with the public theater, which we're very proud of, and we're going to continue. <laughs> On the question of CNN and the, the effort and the, the issue we all have to, in our own minds, think about, there's a reason we have multiple political parties and points of view. It's because there's a reason we have this fine effort in democracy that we started hundreds of years ago. It's because we all know that there are very different opinions about what is the best course for the country. It's why we have elections. And, of course, it's been a perennial issue in news coverage back to Ben Franklin's days as a journalist as to whether the points of view, which uh, in the early days of the republic, I think we all know, there wasn't an attempt in most cases of printed pamphlets for, quote, fair and balanced coverage. What there was was advocacy from all sorts of quarters, uh, the, then, over the years, what developed was both a combination of those press outlets that were advocacy ones that had partisan views, others that strove for independence and to try to be a platform for multiple views. We've said very clearly, and we've tried very hard for years, whether it was at time when we had the magazine or when we started CNN and tried to deliver 24-hour news, including international news, to be a platform for all the points of view and for an attempt at independent or objective news coverage. Now, we get accused all the time, particularly given the recent events. You can think of the United States. You can think of how things are changing in Europe, for example, or in Asia on the political scene, where so much realignment of political thinking, realignment of political parties has occurred. It's been very hard to cover. And as you're citing in your question, which number of commentators or which balance of stories are either pro this candidate or pro that office holder or against, you know, you can't do it that way because depending on what the candidates or the office holders do, then the news follows those actions and the controversies or the struggles between our branches of government that ensue from that. So that's what we're trying to do. We have a number of commentators or critics coming to us that say that we've been too responsible for uh, uncritically putting a platform out for, uh, for the current administration, which is what we're charged with uh, having created a platform that enabled it to win an election advantage. Well, now we've been criticized for covering the controversies that are emerging from the actions that the administration is taking. Uh, it's not going to stop. That's going to continue. We will recommit, I do it to you now, on, for an attempt to try to be uh, independent. I do understand from your question that you're skeptical that we're achieving that. You think we haven't. I don't want you to be skeptical of our effort and aim that's very sincere to try to achieve that. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, the decision on whether we failed you're right, will be made by the viewers. So far, the viewing is up at CNN quite dramatically. It's uh, a record year and a record increase in viewing this year and last year. So it's a very uh, a time, of, as we've all seen in, on every news outlet, depending on one's persuasion, where there's great change. There is supposed to be, according to the various sources, a lot of polarization. Um, I wonder if there is. You know, there's, it may be that we need to have a pretty vigorous debate. 
and out of it usually has emerged a new consensus. So uh, I'll stop trying to be a panelist myself. I'm sorry for, for that's, that's all right, sir. Thank into you. that. Hey, there's, there's, trying there's to explain great, what we're doing. It's not yeah. easy to do. We are trying to uh, keep it balanced and fair. And uh, I, I understand that you're thinking that we haven't succeeded, but we're, we're still trying. There's a great fear of confirmation bias becoming the the, the idea by some news people in the news, and that's what we don't want to have happen. That's what I think we are seeing when we see such extremism among people that they're, they're going to certain networks and saying, well, see, everyone on that network agrees with me, and we need to have a vigorous debate that looks at all sides. And the Media Research Center found that on this particular day, there was hardly a single person for, for Donald Trump, and that only feeds this problem. Um, the other thing that I'll just remind you about is that uh, conservatives have not been ones to boycott. We've, I mean, we support the free market. We want to see businesses succeed. But when it comes to a point where it needs to be done, conservatives are going to be, in this case, probably half the consumers. And they can go to another. There are certainly other networks they can go to. Well, that is, that's true. And we do hope that CNN provides um, valid and important information to conservatives as well as to those of other political persuasions. So we would not want to see that. That doesn't mean we're going to change our coverage to slant it. Uh, and I realize you're asking, well, are we doing that consciously or unconsciously? Certainly not conscious. That's not what any of our CNN people would want to do. Um, it just remains an open contest. Okay. Well, thank you for recommitting, and we will look forward to seeing what happens next year. Thank you. We'll see you next year. <laughs>